In this video, we will get started understanding Spring Security. Spring Security is a framework which provides authentication, authorization and other security features and with Spring Boot, integrating and implementing it is a breeze. In this video, we will start off by building a simple Spring Boot project with a bunch of REST endpoints. Then we will simply add Spring Security dependency and see how it automatically secures all these endpoints with zero coding on our side. Spring Security allows many ways to authenticate using LDAP, database, file-based authentication, etc. But to get started, we will choose a simple in-memory authentication to illustrate the concepts. We will also implement role-based authorization, allowing certain REST endpoints or URLs to be protected by certain roles and some to be not protected. So this should give you a solid base getting started with Spring Security. Here, I have Spring Tool Suite running on my machine, which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let us create a new Spring Boot project by going to File, New, Other, Spring Boot, Spring Starter Project. Click Next. Let us name our project as Spring Security. Click Next. From the available dependencies, let us expand Web, choose Web. We can at this point choose security from the code node, but I want to add it later to illustrate how to add it to an existing project and show what effect of adding this dependency is. Click Finish. Here is our main class. Let us create a new controller package and class. So right click and choose New, Package, call it Controller and click Finish. Next. Right click on the package, choose new, class, call it test security controller and click finish. Let us mark this class as a controller with the at rest controller annotation. Fix the import. Now to save us some time, I am going to paste some code here. Let us fix the imports. So all I am doing here is using the at request mapping annotation, creating rest endpoints for the root, which returns a message hello world rest endpoint for a not protected URL which returns hello from a non protected URL. A rest endpoint protected by user role returns hello user role and the last one to be protected by admin role returning hello admin role. Of course as of now there is no security implemented. Let us go to our main class and using the add component scan annotation include along with the current package com.example.demo, the controller package also for Spring to scan. Let us fix the imports and run the project at this point by right clicking and choosing run as Spring Boot app. The app deploys onto Tomcat listening on port 8080. Let us go to the browser and access HTTP localhost 8080 and we see the message. Let us access not protected endpoint protected by user role and we see the messages. You can also use a REST client. So here I'm using the RESTed add-on to Firefox and invoking the protected by admin role URL and I can access it too. Now let us go back to our project, stop it, right click, go to Maven and select add dependency. Let us type spring boot starter security, pick it from here, click OK. Going to the pom.xml file, we can see the dependency here. Alright, now let us start our app again and see what does this addition of dependency provides us. Spring Boot sees the Spring Security, automatically wires everything. Since we have not configured any user, it creates one for us with the name user and here is the password. Let's make a note of it. Let us go to the browser again and now going to all the endpoints, the root, the non-protected, protected by user endpoint, protected by admin endpoint, all are secured and the login page is also provided for us. Let us enter the username as user, enter the password we copied earlier and we can access the endpoint. Pretty impressive what the addition of just one dependency does for our app. Now let us configure custom authentication and authorization for our app. Let's stop the app, right click on the package, 
choose new class call it security config let us extend it with web security configurer adapter and we will override a couple of its methods to customize authentication and authorization let's first auto wire the configure global method which takes in the authentication manager builder this allows for building in memory authentication ldap authentication jdbc authentication etc as you can see here we will choose the in memory authentication create the first user with name as dev user password as the keyword noop in curly braces and then our text password the general format for the password is id in curly braces and then the encoded password with id you specify which password encoder needs to be used and then you specify the encoded password the id can be of type bcrypt sha256 etc but for simplicity i'm using noop which will delegate it to no op password encoder and take the password literally as specified using authorities we specify the role assigned to this user in this case role underscore user and then the and and similarly we can specify the second user admin user with password as admin and roles assigned as role underscore user and role underscore admin next let us implement authorization so we override the configure method which takes in the http security which allows web based security for specific http requests so we say http dot authorize all requests and then dot ant matchers when the url is having slash protected by user role and then we put an asterisk to allow for anything else after that say request parameters putting asterisks is important that way the hackers cannot avoid this authorization by putting something after and then we say that allow access to anyone with the user role note that the framework will prepend role underscore automatically and so will match the role we have specified up here we want to protect the url with protected by admin role with access only to users with admin role and then for the root url and the url with not protected asterisk we want to permit all so allow public access so this is how simple it is to specify specific rules for specific urls and then we want to use the http basic authorization let us mark this class as a configuration class and also annotate this class with add enable web security annotation which among other things enables http basic and form based authentication automatically rendering a login page etc lastly let's go to our main configuration class and using the import annotation indicate that our second configuration class security config dot class should also be included while configuring spring let's fix the import that is it let us start the app again go to the browser let us type the root url and it is accessible similarly when we access the not protected endpoint it is accessible let us change it to protected by admin role and we are prompted for a username and password by this login form which the framework renders for us we can by the way also specify our own login page let us enter the dev user and its credentials dev and as expected it will not allow anyone without the admin role now let us clear the history and the cache and now submit the url again enter the admin user and its password admin and we get access let us change the url to protected by user and it allows us in as the browser has cached the admin username and password and the admin user also has the user role let us clear the history and cache refresh the page again enter the dev user and password dev and it has access as it has the user role in this video we saw how to integrate spring security to our app which automatically secures all rest endpoints then we implemented our custom authentication and authorization specifying the urls to protect as well as the roles needed to access them thanks for watching